Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on copper metabolism and we're going to discuss how copper is metabolized in the body and what, when this metabolism goes wrong, what happens. So we'll be discussing two of the main copper pathologies, including Menkes disease and Wilson's disease. But first, let's talk about how copper gets absorbed and metabolized. So copper is absorbed in the stomach and the small intestine using this protein called ATP7A. So this protein uses ATP to move copper into the enterocytes and then move it into the blood. So copper is now into our blood and it binds to albumin. So it's, albumin is the carrier for copper before it reaches the liver. After copper reaches the liver, ceruloplasmin is the main carrier. So if you see copper bound to albumin, it's likely in the portal circulation and on its way to the liver. Okay, then copper reaches the liver and goes inside, and now copper is going to bind this protein called apoceruloplasmin, which is essentially a premature form of ceruloplasmin. So once apoceruloplasmin bound copper, it is now called ceruloplasmin. And I've included this little copper symbol over here to remind you that ceruloplasmin is a copper carrier. Now to do this, you need the protein ATP7B. So this is gonna use ATP in order for this reaction to occur, binding copper to apoceruloplasmin. So you'll see here that ATP7A moves copper from our intestinal lumen and our stomach lumen into our blood, and ATP7B moves copper from our liver into our blood because this ceruloplasmin is eventually going to go into the blood. Okay, so ATP7A, intestine, stomach to blood, ATP7B, liver to blood. And that's important because we're going to talk about Wilson's disease where this liver to blood scenario doesn't happen anymore. And Menke's disease is when the intestine to blood scenario doesn't happen anymore. But let's finish this uh, pathway first. So ceruloplasmin carries copper throughout the body, and it's going to give copper to all the tissues of your body. And why is copper important? Well, copper is important for a bunch of enzymes because it acts as a cofactor for these enzymes to work. So this copper is going to go and activate lysyl oxidase, tyrosinase, cytochrome C, and superoxide dismutase. Lysyl oxidase is obviously important because it's used in the production of collagen. Tyrosinase is used to produce melanin. Cytochrome C is in your in electron transport chain and it's going to be used for ATP production. And superoxide dismutase is used for the management of reactive oxygen species. So once this ceruloplasmin gives up its copper and all these enzymes use it, um, this ceruloplasmin is now called aged ceruloplasmin. So it no longer contains a copper and it's going to be returned to the liver to form apoceruloplasmin. What happens if you have too much copper? Well, this excess copper is going to return to the liver and be excreted as bile. Another key function of ceruloplasmin is that it catalyzes the formation of Fe2 plus or ferrous iron to Fe3 plus or ferric iron. And the importance of this is that Fe3 plus is now going to bind transferrin and be transported throughout the body. So ceruloplasmin is not only important for copper transport, but also for iron transport since it allows transferrin to function. All right, so let's get into our diseases. So Menke's disease is a copper deficiency disease that's X-linked. And what, it, what happens is that, is that this ATP7A gene is mutated. So you can no longer absorb copper in your diet. And of course, if you can't absorb copper, all of these enzymes that use copper as a cofactor are going to be deficient. So let's discuss that. Lysyl oxidase can no longer use copper for collagen formation. So you're going to get symptoms mimicking a disease called osteogenesis imperfecta. You're going to get children with blue sclera. The sclera can no longer contain collagen type 1, so now you're going to see the underlying veins of the eye. That's why the sclera turned blue. You're also going to get poor bone formation. So these kids are going to have brittle bones and they'll likely be a little shorter or stunted in growth because collagen is necessary for bone formation. Then you're going to get uh, low melanin production because tyrosinase can no longer function without copper. So these children are going to have a very pale complexion. You're also going to have cytochrome C and superoxide dismutase deficiencies. So low ATP production and increased reactive oxygen species. And what, this, what these two do is they're going to decrease mental function. So they're going to decrease mental function. I'm just going to draw a little brain here. Sorry for the poorly drawn brain. Well, they're going to decrease mental function because now you have low ATP and increased reactive oxygen species, which are particularly damaging to the brain. Another key symptom 
of this disease is this wispy, kinky-like hair, which you'll see often mentioned in textbooks. Okay, so that's Menke's disease. Now let's talk about Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease is a mutation in this co copper ATPase, ATP7B. Okay, so now copper can no longer exit our liver, and it's stuck there, and you're going to get an accumulation of copper because all of this transport mechanism is now inhibited. So copper will accumulate in the system. And with excess copper, you're going to get brain damage. That's one of the main and worst symptoms. So the basal ganglia will be affected, and you're going to get Parkinson's-like symptoms because the basal ganglia are very important for managing movement. And uh, I'll get into a, a video on the basal ganglia later on. And then there's a cortex damage, which can lead to dementia. You're also going to get copper accumulating in the decimates membrane of the cornea. So this copper-like ring you're going to see around the cornea right here. So you see the brown, brownish copper-like tint around the cornea. That is key for diagnosing Wilson's disease. And these are called Kaiser-Fleischer rings. Then you're going to get acute hepatitis, and this can proceed to cirrhosis if untreated. So why does copper cause hepatitis? Well, copper is accumulating in the liver, and copper can actually catalyze the formation of reactive oxygen species. So those species are going to build up in your liver and damage cell membranes, um, peptides, you name it. Reactive oxygen species are very bad for you. Uh, as, a, as a plus, I've included some videos in the description, which might help you understand this topic better. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. All right, I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next video.